एजेंडा ऑफ द टॉक इज इंट्रोडक्शन दैट इज इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ माई इंस्टीट्यूशन दैट इज कैंसर केयर एंड कॉमन फीटल अनोमलीज इंटरवेंशनल प्रोसीजर्स रिलेटेड टू द ओ बी जी वाई एंड इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ सम न्यू डिवाइस दैट इज अ वेब डिवाइस दैट इज फर्स्ट इन पाकिस्तान एंड इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ सम न्यू डिवाइस रिलेटेड टू माइक्रोवेव अबलेशन just brief introduction of cancer care hospital cancer care hospital is the biggest cancer hospital in pakistan alhamdulillah i am one of the board member that is a first palliative care center in pakistan and biggest palliative care center in the asia so most of the uh, facilities are already working in the cancer care now about the common fetal anomalies just briefly that is not a detailed lecture so on ultrasound i will compare ultrasound with some cross sectional imaging as well so basically for ultrasound for the brain you need these four planes that is through the fox cavum in transventricular and transcerebellar at least you have to scan the brain in the four planes to assess all all anomalies so this is the fox view is obtained in the axial plane and depicts the fox cerebri so that must be in a midline and you can evaluate the midline structures and the symmetry and the asymmetry of the cerebrum the second view is transventricular the transventricular view depicts ventriculo megaly and the all assessment related to the ventricles so normally the ventricles are less than 10 mm and the choroid plexus is covered completely there for example transventricular view this is this is a dilated ventricle ventricle is more than uh, 10 mm and the ventricular vent, uh, the choroid plexus is actually dingling there so normally the choroid plexus must be fixed in the ventricle like this so cavum view this is actually the cavum view at the level of thalamus shows that the normal csf csp are midline rectangular and acute structure just anterior to the configuration of an empty fluid filled black box so this is the cavum view so fourth view is the posterior fossa view or trans cerebellar view so cisterna magna can be evaluated in this view along with the cerebellum so normally again the cisterna magna is usually that is less than 10 mm so nn kefali this is this shows no calvarium or cortical brain tissue this is not the brain tissue this is actually a, uh, just a fibrous tissue this is not a brain tissue so actually in nn kefali there is no calvarium no calvarium and there is the no brain tissue so another another example but this is a sagittal view that was the coronal view first one is coronal and this is the sagittal view gray scale view shows disorganized tissue superior to the orbits this is not the brain tissue and that is not compatible uh, the, that is not a brain tissue basically pseudo angiomatistoma so on ultrasound you can uh, diagnose occipital encephalocele or meningocele very easily that is actually a calvarium defect at the occipital region and protruded csf space in this region if there is a solid area within this then that is an encephalocele if there is no solid area then this is a meningocele so i, I already uh, asked that i will compare the ultrasound images with mr or ct images as well so this is the mr image of the same patient here you can see a large csf space and calvarial defect is here and some solid area is also here so this is an encephalocele same similar patient on ultrasound axial slices through the brain this is showing 
सी एस एफ स्पेस और सिस्टिक एरिया इन द ऑक्सीपिटल रीजन एंड देर इज ए डिफेक्ट हीयर डिफ्रेंशियल इज डिफ्रेंशियल इज मनेंगोसील और यू कैन डिफ्रेंशियल यू कैन मेक डिफ्रेंशियल ऑफ सिस्टिक हाइग्रोमा बट बिकॉज देर इज ए कैलवेरियम डिफेक्ट सो दिस इज अमनिंगोसील दिस इज नॉट अ सिस्टिक हाइग्रोमा एंड सिस्टिक हाइग्रोमा इज यूल एक्सटेंडिंग टूवर्ड्स द नेक एंड यूल इज सराउंडिंग द नेक सो क्रॉस सेक्शनल इमेजिंग सेम पेशेंट हियर ऑन एम आर आई यू कैन सी डिफेक्ट ऑब्वियस डिफेक्ट इन द ऑक्सीपिटल रीजन एंड देर इज ऑनली अ सी एस एफ पॉचिंग हियर नो ब्रेन टिश्यू विद इन द लीशन सो डेफिनेटली दिस इज अनिंगोसील सम मोर नॉमलीस ओपन लिप शिजन कफैली अल्ट्रा अगेन एक्जिल इमेज शोइंग अ सी एस एफ स्पेस एट द लेटल एस्पेक्ट दैट इज एक्सटेंडिंग अप टू द कैलवेरियम एट द कॉर्टेक्स अलोंग अलोंग विद द वेंट्रिकुलोमोगैली सो दिस इज अ केस ऑफ ओपन लिप शिजन कैफैली एंड वी विल कंपेयर दिस विद एम आर आई सो ऑन एम आर आई नो दिस इज मोर ऑबियस द a large csf space in the periphery in the right frontal parietal region that is communicating extending up to the ventricular system and this is the open lip schizen kefali and there is a ventriculomegaly as well that is associated ventriculomegaly so one teaching point is dandy walker malformation is the most common congenital cerebellar malformation characterized by hypoplasia or a genesis of the cerebellum cerebellar vermis with associated enlargement of the posterior fossa dilatation of the fourth ventricle ventriculum megaly and communication of the fourth ventricle with the cisterna magna this is the total dandy walker syndrome explanation or malformation so in this image ultrasound image shows a dilated cisterna magna that is communicating with the fourth ventricle and hypoplasia of the vermis this is typical example of dandy walker malformation so on mri now the things are more obvious and more clarity is there cisterna magna large cisterna magna that is communicating with the fourth ventricle and a genesis of the vermis this is this is typical example of dandy walker malformation so about carry two malformations axial slice of the Uh, on ultrasound cerebellum is not the normal this is banana shaped cerebellum and the calvarium is also not normal that is lemon shaped calvarium so this is typical features of carry to malformation and you can get some sagittal slices and you can have uh, later mr as well for further evaluation so here another example of carry to malformation there is ventriculomegaly as well so sagittal image of the fetal spine depicts a spinal myelomeningocele that is also hallmark of carry to malformation this is meningo myelocele mr image is showing large cisterna magna communicating with the fourth ventricle and there is a hardly visible cisterna magna is there and uh, uh, there is conus of cerebellum coning of the cerebellum herniation of the cerebellum is also here so this is called cervical medullary kink that is confirmatory for carry to malformation so this case is showing ventriculum galley there is a cross ventriculum galley but on further images fourth ventricle was collapsed and that was a case of acuduct stenosis so here you can see fourth ventricle is not visible hardly visible third ventricle is also dilated and lateral ventricles were dilated so this is a typical case of acuduct stenosis so teaching point regarding the hollow frozen cephaly constitutes a spectrum of brain and facial malformation that occur when the four brain or frozen cephalon fails to divide into two distinct hemispheres that is at fourth or fifth weeks of gestation it is categorized into three categories low bar semi low bar and a low bar 
सो लो बार इज द मोस्ट कॉमन ए लो बार इज द मोस्ट कॉमन ए लो बार होलोप्रोजन कैफेली इज ऑबटेन्ड इन द सेकेंड टाइम एस्टर शोज अ सिंगल मोनो वेंटिकल एंड फ्यूज थैलामाइन दैट इज टिपिकल ए लो बार इमेज दैट इज अ सिंगल वेंटिकल एंड फ्यूज थैलामाइन सो इन ए लो बार होलोप्रोजन कैफेली there is a central propsis with absence of normal nose and hypotelorism both orbits are just adjacent to each other and there is a soft tissue in the uh, nasal region so this is another case with fused thalami fused thalami is a typical case of a lobar hollow prosen cephaly so one to two cases of corpus callosum agenesis in corpus callosum agenesis there is actually uh, absence of the csf csp between the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles so on doppler image the this these are not aligned uh, vessels so distorted vessels are typical feature of corpus callosum agenesis so on mri you can see uh, steer horn configuration of the lateral ventricle just like this that is total opposite to the normal one so this is confirmatory image for a genesis of the corpus callosum septo optic dysplasia that is very difficult to diagnose on ultrasound but if there is uh, frontal horns with no csp seen fused frontal horns are also commonly seen in low bar hollow prosen cephaly sometimes making the two entities indistinguishable so but in septo optic dysplasia optic nerves are hypoplastic then you can come this is not possible to uh, evaluate on ultrasound but on mri you can see very small hypoplastic optic nerves so this is septic optic dysplasia so regarding the vascular anomalies vein of ganglion malformation is one of the most common and this image shows a rounded cystic area in the midline but on doppler that is a large vascular area this is typical case of vein of gallen malformation so another teaching point differential diagnosis of a midline cystic cns mass at prenatal ultrasound includes vascular malformation such as a vein of gallen malformation arachnoid cyst and some normal variants so this is very easy to evaluate vein of gallen from any arachnoid cyst so now my topic of interest main topic of interest is interventional procedures in a obgy i will discuss some new equipments in pakistan so as you know interventional radiology is minimally invasive no surgery is required so related to obgy we are regularly doing fallopian tube recanalization under fluoro then postpartum hemorrhage that is embolization and ballooning of the postpartum hemorrhage and placenta accreta spectral disorders along with uh, along with embolization and ballooning uterine artery embolization that is for for both for the bleeding as one case discussed with uh, by professor safdar malik there was a hemorrhage within the endometrial cavity we can embolize that hemorrhage Uh, balloon catheters in the iliac arteries to stop the bleeding especially related to the placenta and management of uterine vascular malformation so fallopian tube recanalization nowadays is very easy procedure that is definitely under fluoro or cm guidance and you can put the catheter in the cavity and you can put the uh, wire there are two type of wire one is the glide and another is the micro wire and that is very easy to actually open or recanalize the fallopian tubes this is a quite easy method and a success rate is quite high if if occlusion is on the proximal then success rate is more than 90% if it is the distal sometimes it is around less than 70% again a good number then post hemorrhage ir treatments so this is in the uh, pph management includes manual removal of the placenta but nowadays we can embolize the bleeding point or we can stop the bleeding so that is with like this this is a routine angiogram again this is on uh, cm and the, in the cath lab we can stop the bleeding with ballooning and we can embolize the bleeding point as well so placenta accreta spectral disorders arterial embolization 
in women with postpartum hemorrhage has several goals. So that is, uh, this is a ballooning of the internal iliac uh, arteries. Uh, this is a quite rapid and simple procedure. It will take not more than, I think, 10 minutes. Now, uterine artery embolization. We are regularly doing uterine artery embolization for two ways. The most common is for fibroids. For fibroids, we are doing two types of procedures. Those are quite late, late, latest in Pakistan. One is the uterine artery embolization under cath lab, definitely. And other is the microwave ablation of the fibroids. Both are quite uh, minimally invasive and latest gadgets. So in the uterine artery embolization, again, you can access the uterine artery and you can do the angiogram and you can embolize at this point. Embolization, different embolization materials are available. We are usually doing with PVA particles. So this is again quite common. Uterine vascular malformations are quite common with uh, some are related to the uh, DNC and other intervention and some are congenital. So you can diagnose with the angiogram. This is a AVM within the uterus and you with the micro catheter, we uh, super select, uh, selected it and you can embolize at this point. So here the embolization material is a bit different like PVA or sometimes uh, glue and alcohol as well. So now last slides about the web. <coughs> This is a web machine, vacuum assisted device. I, uh, I just introduced one, a month before in Pakistan, that is first in Pakistan. So with this machine, you can uh, do the surgery of breast lesions without surgery. Just you can do the surgery with only needle. So we can do the biopsy with the device. This is a vacuum assisted, assisted device. No need of anesthesia, no need of admission. You can extract around four centimeter lesion within a five minute without any surgery under just ultrasound guidance and with local anesthesia. So this is a web machine, the most latest equipment in the world and we are doing it regularly. This is the system, this is the technique, how this works. And the, the technique is same as the uh, breast biopsy, but this, this machine is only for breast, not any other area. Another software, another software uh, we introduced uh, that is again latest in Pakistan, that is for the shell analysis of any lesion, for, for example, for the thyroid, breast, and liver, and many other areas, and you can avoid the biopsies. These are for borderline lesions, and you can uh, differentiate easily for, uh, between the benign and the malignant lesions. This software is only for shell analysis. So lastly, introduction of RFA and microwave. This is a RFA machine, the one of the most latest machine with uh, cool tip RFA. This is basically uh, uh, not for, uh, this is for fibroid as well as for liver cancer and thyroid nodules and many other areas as well. And microwave, uh, I introduced this microwave machine in Pakistan in 2017. That was the first time and now Alhamdulillah, more than 30 centers are doing this microwave. This is for head to toe. For example, we are doing thyroid, lung, liver, fibroids, bone, and many other areas as well. These are different needles. Summary, good quality ultrasound and Doppler is quite helpful to detect fetal anomalies. Many interventional procedures are already introduced in Pakistan and now established as already discussed. New gadgets like web, vacuum assisted device, RFA and microwave are very good tools for minimally invasive microsurgeries for the fibroids, for the cancer and for many other nodules as well. And we are using cosmetically in thyroid as well. Thank you very much for being patient. Thank you very much. <laughs>